Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be layout uh, video update number five for my first model railroad here, a 4x8 with a extension over here on this side of the room. So, got uh, several things to update here since uh, the February update video. This is coming in here at the very end of March, but uh, did manage to find some time to squeak in this update video. So let's get right to it. Uh, one of the first things that I wanted to keep working on was the continuation of the coal mine. Uh, in the last update, we uh, just were starting to put some of these turnouts in on the 4% grade up to the mine. So I've got the rest of the turnouts in now, and I've got the uh, three stub tracks for the coal mine and the loading um, portion of the mine. So went ahead and painted the foam uh, brown. Uh, burnt sienna actually to just uh, mask the color of the foam obviously we'll have ground cover on there uh, probably some cinders up there in the coal mine to to uh, represent spilled coal uh, but nevertheless wanted to get away from that foam color get a more natural earth tone uh, before I put the track down so the four percent grade uh, is interesting <clears throat> i've tried it with uh, one engine this is just an old um gosh i don't even know the brand i got it when i was a kid it's a dc engine and uh, you know it did fine with all five of these uh, hopper cars here uh, pushed them up the grade no issue and no wheel slippage even going through uh, multiple uh, crossovers here's the switches as you take turn out from the main uh, to the various mine tracks so i don't think the four percent grade is really going to be an issue uh, other than you know the cars will roll down um I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that yet. Maybe it won't be an issue. We'll figure that out when we really get into more of an operational uh, uh, setting. But for now, the 4% grade seems to be okay. One of the things I did do, and uh, yeah, I'm going to have to move these out of the way. Uh, one of the things I did do was I kind of went out of my normal. Uh, I don't typically glue my track down, but in this case I did because... Uh, the track spikes don't adhere very well to the foam. They can they can loosen pretty easily. They actually do a really good job of uh, keeping the track in place on cork, but on foam, uh, they have a tendency to slip and move around. So I did kind of, in select places, uh, put some glue down to get the track uh, to better conform to the 4% grade, especially where we had grade changes uh, here, like at the top of the slope, for instance. And that actually made the... Uh, rolling stock go a lot smoother over that four percent grade you can see i know the feeders are kind of in the way but you can see uh, the rails um, they do kind of have a sharp transition i may file those down a little bit to just improve uh, rollability even more but i feel like gluing uh, really helped so that's the update on the coal mine uh, the other update on the other side of the layout i did get the rest of the track in for uh, the tank loading track and the grain elevator. So, um, getting that track in was a big uh, milestone as well because now every single piece of track is laid on the main 4x8 board with the exception of the scrapyard spur uh, over here. You can see it's laid out. I just haven't put it in yet because I'm going to actually kind of depress the foam down here and uh, bring that track down a little bit. And uh, as you can see, it's also the playground for. Uh, my kids when they're helping me on the layout so haven't set that piece of track yet but that's going to be in the future so really I, I consider the majority of the main uh, board track laying to be complete so a little bit of an accomplishment there i'm happy to see all that track down especially as we near the end of winter and my time down here is going to start uh, dropping off as the weather improves outside so i uh, worked on turnout control some more i know i've talked about this on the ground throws but uh, really, I have all of the, uh, I guess the main line or the outside tracks are now ground throw turnout controlled. I need to order some more to do some of these interior spurs right now. Uh, there's no control on those. So going to be working on that as soon as I can get some more ordered. And um, also in the last month, I've been working on track weathering. Previously, I only had ties painted uh, really there between that back curve turnout and the diamonds. And now I've made... Uh, some good progress on painting the ties. It is slow. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty painstaking, but uh, sometimes it's a little relaxing just to come down here and paint for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and see what kind of progress can be made. So, a um, couple other things to uh, 
update on. I did have some short circuiting issues. Um, you know, I laid all this track in the grain elevator area and dropped, oh, well, probably six or seven feeders to power all the various points in here and uh, fired up the layout and definitely had a, a short circuit issue. Um, it's a little difficult to trace it down. You can use a multimeter and set it to uh, ohms for resistance and try to find a place where you don't have resistance. Um, I don't know, it's tricky uh, when you wire up a larger section of track at once. If you have a short, you kind of have to go through piece by piece and see where where the trouble lies. Um, I traced it down to one of these fast tracks turnouts. You can see that uh, when you have these PCB ties, you have to notch in between the copper uh, on the ties where you don't want the circuit to be carried across to the other rail where it would cause a short. And um, I think it was that one right there. The, the cut in it was not adequate and it was causing the circuit to jump across that uh, over the copper and short the layout out. So took care of that. That helped a lot. Um, I've also had some short shorting issues here as well. Uh, when I trim these rails, I actually broke that rail off the PCB tie, or I broke the solder, and uh, had to redo it, and it's caused some, some short-circuiting issues as well. So I've been keeping an eye on that problem area. Uh, one thing I've noticed on these fast tracks turnouts is um, you have to be really good on the soldering on these PCB ties. Uh, it's a a uh, little bit of a catch-22 between having nice, clean, flat solders and solders that are strong enough to hold uh, the diverging rails. And in this case, on this one here, you can see I'm going to have to re-solder it because um, it's popped off. And the movement of the ground throws caused it to pop off. So uh, I will be more generous with the solder when I put it back on. And um, I will sacrifice uh, aesthetics for functionality because I don't want to have to be re-soldering these all the time. So... Um, but other than that, you know, I, I really like the fast tracks turnouts. Um, you just have to be diligent on your solders, of course. Uh, so other than that, you know, I wanted to get to structure building, but uh, track laying took up most of my time and still in the mode of wanting to get as much track down as I can um, and do structures later as time allows. I did not really structures, but I did build some more bumpers and got those painted. So there's quite a few bumpers sitting around at the end of the spurs. Uh, I believe I only have two more left to make, kind of make them in batches. So not really structures, but I did do some construction with scenery pieces. So uh, maybe in the next month, if uh, time works out, I'll get into working on some structure building. I don't know. I'm a little um, intimidated by structures. I haven't really built them before. The grain elevator sitting back there is is honestly my first structure I've ever built. And as you can see, it's not even complete. So um, I find the process goes really slow. Uh, I think I need to do some more research on the adhesive and maybe get an adhesive that works better. Um, this, this is a decent adhesive. It's usually what I use. Um, the problem is I think the cure time is too long and I, I don't have the right jigs, I guess, to hold the pieces in place. And I don't have the time to hold them in place myself until the bond forms. So... I don't know, maybe some research there uh, to help improve structure construction, but that is something on the wish list of things to accomplish. Um, but before I do that, I will definitely finish all of the feeders. You know, I started to I drilled the holes, ran the wires, got the suitcase connectors out, and uh, now it's time to make a bunch of solders, get those connected to the bus wire underneath, and then test for short circuits, of course. So. Those are the next two things I hope to accomplish in the month of April. The beer for tonight, we've got uh, Bad Elmer's Porter from Upland Brewing, which is down in Bloomington, Indiana. It's uh, an unseasonably cool day here in Indiana for late March, so uh, a porter fits in just right with that weather. So with that, I think we'll wrap up uh, layout update number five, and we'll see you in the next one for number six.